Chris. This is a question from Magdalena Silva. Color exercises are sometimes hard for me to imagine. What kind of light am I drawing and from where? That's a great question, Magdalena. Um, and there are two ways that we use the light. If you are wanting to send light to another person, then first you wait and ask them, what color do you want from me? Once you know the color that they've asked for, then you always draw it from the cosmos down through the top of your head, into your stomach or solar plexus, and laser that color to them. So it never comes from you. It comes from the higher octave where your souls connect from a cosmic level. So you draw it in and you radiate it out to that person. Uh, if you are wanting to send color to a part of your body, maybe you have a pain someplace or you feel like uh, you need support or you just want to lift yourself up, then you would ask your own body, what color do I need right now? Or maybe even to your higher self, higher self, please give me a color that will support me at this moment. So whatever color comes, either from your body or from your higher self, which is the frequency of light that will support you, Again, once you know the color, then if it's for you, you just open up your consciousness, open up the mind of the cell, and suck that light into your body. Again, if it needs to come to a particular part of your body, then you just pull it into that part of your body. But otherwise, you just drink it in so that it's like a nourishment for each cell. Don't be concerned about feeling that it's difficult. There's nothing more easy, truly, than imagining a color. Just take a deep breath. What's the color that pops into your consciousness? And then either draw it in from the cosmos and radiate it out, or draw it in to you because it's coming to help you. Uh, sometimes people get more than one color. They get one color and then another color comes. That's because the brain, the consciousness of the cell, is interpreting light at the speed of light. And so it's very, very quick. And sometimes someone will ask for a rainbow. And so we imagine a rainbow. Uh, some people don't see. They hear the color. It makes no difference. The thing that makes it work is that you focus uh, on a color, on a frequency of light, or several frequencies of light. Remember that your body is made of light. So it knows light. It knows color. It knows the tones of the color. What kind of a blue? What kind of a green? You know? And so all you have to do is relax and let the light come through you or into you. So thank you, Magdalena. This is a question, Chris, from Michael Nair. And he says, I want to know your beliefs regarding a place called heaven and a place called hell. Do you believe in the devil? Oh my, Michael. <laughs> what a wonderful question because it sits... Uh, very profoundly in a book that I wrote called The Evolution of God. And what the question involves is, where did we get those concepts? And uh, what my own higher self, my own inner knowing has always said is that those concepts come from times before when religions or authorities were attempting to control people to help them to live a particular kind of life, to know what is right and what is wrong. And so, of course, they use the fear tactics. And I have to say that perhaps they're still being used today. It says, if you're not good, down to hell you go, no forgiveness for you, out, out of this place that you might get if you're very, very good. Michael, humans are born good. Humans are born divine. You can't get into body without the divine spark that is beyond good and evil. And so these energies are created by people uh, and by religions and by that focal point uh, of pressuring us into ways that behave that perhaps, perhaps, are for the good of the whole. What I found in working with prisoners and killers is that there is always a divine spark. Whether it's a rapist or a killer that I'm working with, I can see the divine in them. So I could never say that they are going to go to hell. I can only say that they were never taught love. And so they have lived 
only through the negativity that they themselves have experienced. And we are all a part of that. So, uh, we use fear to constrict ourselves. It's very, very poisonous. It's time to let go of them all. Each moment in your life, each experience could be an experience of heaven. Do we have to have the angels singing to feel peace or safety or love? No. We have to hear our inner voice, our higher self, that says, you are a part of the cosmos. You are divine. So the devil, the devil is simply uh, an imaginatory reflection of what would be the worst, some energy outside us that causes us to experience terrible things, or again, to be very, very afraid. A conscious being, Michael, an enlightened being, a being, a being that searches for the self, truly knows that the biggest devil we have is inside us. What is a devil? A devil is simply an energy that is not in the light, an energy that whispers to us uh, things that are harmful to ourselves and others. We can remove the concept of the devil, Michael. It's old. It belongs to old, uh, old societies, uh, rituals of tribes. It doesn't belong to today's world or the future. We could laugh about that devil inside us. We have a very funny saying that says, the devil made me, made me do it. We really mean that I wanted to do it, so I blamed it on someone else. Michael, let us let go of blaming someone else. Let us find inside us what is true. Even if at some moment it might be that, well, you did something, thought something, or felt something that's truly negative, that's truly not who you are. You have the power to release that aspect, that devil in you. And in effect, there is no religion, there is no other great being or authority that could do it for you. And this is the truth of the power of human choice. I send you my cosmic giggles and my great love, my